Welcome back and we are going to continue with Mendelian genetics and we're going to do a little more interpreting of pedigrees and in this video we're going to focus on a blood type pedigree and then a sex linked gene pedigree. So let's begin with the blood type pedigree. So if you remember we did multiple alleles and we were looking at blood typing as one of those situations and for blood types we have four different blood types A type blood, B type blood, AB, and O and the reason we have AB is because this is a codominant situation where both traits appear simultaneously the alleles we use are capital I with a superscript A for A type blood capital I with a superscript B for B type blood and a lowercase i is the recessive for O type blood. Again we remind you that a male is a square and a female is a circle. In this case we have a male with A blood and a female with B blood who have three children. One is a male with AB blood, a daughter with O blood, and a second daughter with O blood. We know that the male with A blood marries a female with O blood and they have a daughter with B blood who marries a gentleman with O blood. The daughter on the right side of the pedigree, we know she's married. We don't know anything about her husband's blood type at this time, but we do know that she has a daughter with B blood and a son with O blood. So our job is to try to figure out what are the genotypes for each of these individuals based on their relationship in the pedigree. So let's begin by doing using the evidence in the pedigree and the information available in the pedigree to figure some of this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to let's identify the ones we know absolutely for sure. We know that all of the people with O blood have little i, little i. So little i, little i for the daughter. We have another little i and a little i for the second daughter. The husband in generation three is also going to be little i, little i and the wife in generation two is also going to be little i little i and we know that the son in generation three is also going to be little i little i so those are automatics we know that the only way you can get O type blood is if you have the homozygous recessive little i little i so what else can we do well we know that this individual here with AB blood is codominant for AB so we know that individual is IA IB we also know that the father in the first generation has to have an IA and we know that the mother in the first generation has to have an IB and that's how this their son has IA IB the AB blood type but the original parents also have two daughters with O blood so we know that both of those parents have to have the little I allele now what else can we figure out from here we know that the daughter in generation 3 individual 1 we know she has B blood and she got that B allele from her dad we know that her mother can only give her a little i. So we know her blood type, genotype is IB little i. 
she is heterozygous for B blood. Now if we come over here to generation 3 individual 3 we know she can only get a little I from her mom. She has B type blood so she has to get a B allele and that B allele has to come from her dad. Now this relationship generated a daughter with B blood but a son with O blood and one of the eyes came from the mother but the second little eye has to come from the father. So we know the father in this case generation 2 individual 5 has to have B type blood and is heterozygous for B because he gives a B to his daughter and he gives the lowercase i to his son. So based on the relationships in the pedigree, we can generate the genotypes for each of those individuals. So let's look at a third example of interpreting a pedigree and we're going to look at in this case a trait that is sex linked and it is a sex-linked recessive trait on the X chromosome and this happens to be for the disease Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now what we're looking at here is again males are going to be XY and females are going to be XX and in this pedigree we've given you the hint that if the female has this striped pattern she is a carrier but does not have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So if we remind ourselves of how sex-linked traits work, especially those that are carried on the X chromosome, it only takes one of the recessive alleles to affect a male, but it takes both of the recessive alleles to affect a female. So in most sex-linked traits, the males are going to be affected more often. Females are often going to be carriers, but not show the trait or the disease or the syndrome. So let's see if we can figure out the genotypes for these individuals. So first off, let's put a Y next to all of the males we know that all of the males are going to have the Y trait and the Y trait in a sex link trait the Y chromosome carries no information. So we're going to put Y's with all of the males knowing that we are dealing with a male offspring. Now this male does not have Duchenne muscular dystrophy so he would have to have the dominant allele on his X chromosome. So he is going to be X capital D Y. The mother she also does not have it so she's going to be X capital D but she is a carrier which means she's going to have the X lowercase d. She unfortunately passes that lowercase d to her son who has Duchenne muscular dystrophy generation 2 individual 2. He marries a female who is also a carrier. So she is going to be X capital D, X lowercase d. Their son in generation 3 does not have Duchenne, so he's going to be X capital D Y. Their daughter, unfortunately, has Duchenne, so she is going to not only get the X lowercase d from her mom, but she can only get the X lowercase d from her dad so she is going to have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. 
In generation two, individual three, she is a carrier, x capital D, x lowercase d, and she marries a gentleman who does not have Duchesne. So he's going to be an x lowercase d. Their three children, the son does not have it, x capital D, y, the son who does have it, x lowercase d, y, and the daughter, she is going to get the x capital D from her mom, but she's going to get the x lowercase d because that's the only thing possible from her dad. So she is actually going to be a carrier. So these are all examples of how to use the generations and evidence from each of those generations to determine the phenotypes and genotypes of individuals for certain traits and characteristics using Mendelian genetics. Now, getting back to the royal family pedigree that I showed you in video one. This is the British royal family with William and Harry. William and Harry, <coughs> excuse me, Harry of course married Meghan and William of course married Kate. But their parents were Charles, who would be number 11, and Diana, number 12. And their family tree goes way back to Victoria and Edward, Victoria and Albert. Now, the trait that we're looking at is hemophilia, which is a sex-linked trait. And again, the male will get the trait from his mother. Most females are going to be carriers. And as you see, in most cases here, we do not see any females who actually have hemophilia. Victoria did not pass the gene to her son, number two, who was Edward VII. Edward VII married Alexandra, who also did not have it. So the current British royal family we see has no trait of hemophilia. So that line is clean. However, Victoria did pass it on to Alice, who passed it on to Alex, who married Nicholas II, and this is the Russian royal family. Many of you have probably seen the uh, cartoon movie Anastasia. That's this individual right here. These are the four Russian Tsarists who were all assassinated. So it is interesting to look at how these afflictions do not just affect normal everyday people, but also affect the royal families as well. So this is one of the most interesting cases of following a pedigree and looking at how traits are passed from generation to generation.